For many riders, a top of the range bike costing thousands upon thousands is the stuff of dreams. So for those with a more modest budget, just what is the difference between a entry level full sus and a mid range to full sus? We're lucky enough to ride some pretty fancy bikes at GM, yeah, and it's perk of the job. We do, Neil, but today we're going to dive into the more affordable range, mid-range bikes, where most of us mountain bikers can afford. Now, thanks to Polygon, we'll be riding Polygon's Siskiyou N9, well, I will be, at, and it comes in at $299 and €2899. Euros. Not bad, Not but bad. this is a Siskiyou D7, which is almost half that price, proper affordable. This is $1599 and €1499. Euros. Right, let's see how they ride. Let's have a quick bike check to see what you get for your pounds or dollars or euros. So I'll start because I've got the entry level bike, the Siskiyou D7. Uh, it's an alloy ALX frame. This bike has got 120 mil of travel. And the great thing about it, it's got modern geometry. So it's long, low and slack with a reach of 445 for a medium. And actually Polygon used a wheel fit size system, much like other brands. So small and medium bikes uh, for this Siskiyou D7 come with 27.5 wheels. There's also a medium option with 29, but then the bigger bikes, the large XL, come with 29 wheels. The suspension comes from a RockShox Recon RL fork up front, again, 120 mil travel, and then a Deluxe Select Plus shock with a lockout lever, which RockShox say are the value-based performance suspension units. Shimano gears and drivetrain, but the pocket-friendly Dior Mech with an 11-speed shifter and cassette, Shimano M200 brakes. As we've seen from other videos, Shimano have a great set of kit for all budget ranges. Tires from Schwalbe, the Nobby Nick Performance, budget but durable tires, and the wheels are alloy double wall rims with alloy hubs. This bike does have some modern touches like the one by system, although it is paired to an 11 speed set, not like the 12 speed premium ones. But you've got a Transex alloy dropper post with 170 mil of travel. Finishing kit comes from Entity, saddle and alloy bars, stem and rims. Now the Polygon Siskiyou N9 fits in the mid-range category. It uses the same aluminium, the ALX aluminium lightweight frame with a tapered headset. Now this bike also uses the wheel fit size system, offering 27.5 in small to medium and a 29er a large and up. When it comes to suspension travel with these bikes, the small to medium is 170 mil travel front and rear. Now that drops 10 mil when you go up to a 29er to 160 front and rear. It's running the FUBAR linkage, now this bike comes with a 1x12 system, Shimano Dior XT, and that's quite premium for a bike of this price. Shimano XT hubs, front and rear, and the suspension setup on this bike is Fox suspension, but on the front it's running the 36 Performance fork and a Fox DPX2 rear shock. Now this rear shock has three points of lockout, so that's a little bit more premium than Neil's. We've got a Trans-X dropper post on here, and a less familiar brand, TRP for brakes, but you've probably seen Aaron Gwynn riding these in the World Cup. According to Polygon, the entry-level D7 weighs in at 14.3 kilograms. That's a 29er in a size medium. The mid-range N9 also weighs in at 14.3 kilograms, but has a 27.5 wheel size. So both the D7 and N9 weigh the same, but the mid-range N9 is a bigger travel bike at 170 mil of travel front and rear for the 27.5 wheel. So my bike's 120 mil travel, more of a trailer bike, a bit of a down country bike. So it's slightly different, that's more bigger travel. I would say this is more like all mountain, a lot more travel. So where does the money go? Well, I've got a uh, Dior kit, so I saved some big money there. It's a one by 11, although that cassette is quite big still. Yeah, I'm running one by 12, but I've got Shimano XT. You know, that's pretty good. I've also got less well-known finishing kit, my bar and stem compared to your fancy. I've got race face, bar and stem. I've still got, you know, a big brand rock shock suspension, got the fork and shock, only one position on the lockout on this. Mm. So it's their sort of lower end stuff, but it's still good stuff. It's good, I like it. I've got three on the rear, I've got Fox front and rear, and 
yeah, can lock out the front. More adjustability, I guess. Yeah, and more travel. Come on, is it more fun? <laughs> Don't know, Neil. Let's find out. super capable for 120 mil travel trail bike and it makes me think that arguably the geometry is more important than the actual components because it's proper sorted geometry on this but it is a decent build you know you get the features you get the dropper post you get a one by system because that would be a big upgrade i think or a slightly costly one if it came as a two by three by to change it to one by only 11 speed but again you know shimano is so cross compatible that you could start upgrading this especially when things start wearing out so you get your money's worth out of those bits then start going up to slx xt whatever you fancy same with the, the rear shock and the fork if you fancied it in a year or two's time you could upgrade those again that would make quite a big difference to the quality of suspension yes it doesn't have the same big brands as blake's bike though this is mid-range bike. There's not much really you want to change on it, but it is a super capable bike. 170 mil travel, front and rear. And even if you were to 29 inch, that's 160 mil. So it's a big bike for big mountain trails. Now, the, probably the only thing I would upgrade is the disc brakes on here, the disc rotors, because they're 180 front and rear. Now I would be changing that probably, I'd go up to 203 maybe keep it as a 180 on the rear maybe go a bit bigger that's just going to help dissipate that heat because it is a big travel bike the other thing is is tubeless ready tires now it comes with tubed and the rims are tubeless ready so you can go to tubeless put some gunk in there make it a little bit more trail friendly for yourself on the trails uh, but if you're thinking of a big major upgrade I would recommend going for the Grip 2, the top end Grip 2 cartridge in the fork. Now that can go in there and it'll make that front end super plush. Of course, if you can't quite stretch your budget to that three grand uh, of the bike that Blake's got, the N9, then there are bikes in between the two. And this is a brand new up-to-date Siskiyou T8. The T8 is a lightweight hydroformed aluminium boost frame coming at 140mm travel for the 29er and 150mm travel for the 27.5 wheel. And you can see the difference in components sort of in the middle between the two bikes we've been riding today. You've got the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, Fox 34 rhythm fork and the float rear shock and then you've got SLX from Shimano that of course sits between the XT and the Dior group sets. So in terms of pricing, the T8 options sit between the D7 and N9, coming in at US$2,299 or €2,199. Euros. In regards to weight, the T8 is actually slightly heavier, coming in at 15.2 kilograms. It just goes to show you don't have to spend a fortune to get a really capable bike these days. I think, you know, it's more important to buy the right type of bike, and no matter what money you're spending, it's getting the right travel, geometry, size that really works for you and your riding. Like we say, if you really feel the need, there's plenty of scope to upgrade these yeah. if you want to. Yeah, exactly, but some mid-range bikes, you don't actually need to spend much on them. It's just personal preference of colors if you need to do that. That's yeah, it. very true. Neil, I reckon, I know what you need. Can yeah. you see your face? Cup of tea, flapjack, and then a pedal back to the top of this 2,000 meter climb. Oh, I thought you were going to say I needed a wash after looking at my face, but... No, that's handsome face, Mark. Neil, come on. 